Hello, everybody. This is Errol Rappaport. I am the Goodwill Ambassador for Black Tie Magazine, and I'm here tonight with Quinn Lemley, star of The Heat Is On, the story of Rita Hayworth, and also Burlesque the Broadway. Tell us about yourself. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Errol, I am so excited to be here with you. And we're actually on the set, on my set at MNN for Secrets of the Stage. I just finished interviewing Shawnee Gross, who has the Shawnee Collection. And so that's an, that's an interview-style talk show. I, like, pull back the curtains and interview creative people. You've just reversed the t turn the table, <laughs> and now you're interviewing me. It's part of Lee Strasberg's work. Yes. Well, right? we both went to Lee we Strasberg. Both, that's right. Yeah. And he taught us so much. When you left the school and, you, and, and in life, what, it, what, what brings you back to the work that you had at Lee Strasberg? Uh, well, I mean, the method, you know, the, recreating certain moments and living in those moments and using the, the five senses, I, that was probably the most pr profound impact that Lee had on, on me with the method. And I've gone on to do Meisner and all kinds of other techniques, but you, you, you know, we all have, as artists, I, I'm an actress and a singer as well, we have like our toolkits and for different things we need to use different tools to create mm -hmm. art. And emotions. And life is a work in progress. Yes. And all the things we do, and we're always trying to do it better. Mm -hmm. How do I do it better? How do I do each take better? Mm -hmm. I just did, just did an interview, and I know your mind's going to think, well, maybe I should have said this, or maybe I should have done talk about this dress this way, right. or it just you you never stop. Right. You're always you know enjoy, you just I just heard you do the interview. You're always inspired by how do I make my how do I how do I, how do I make things better? Mm -hmm. How do I how do I grow as an artist? Mm -hmm. And have, are you ever? We're happy? always growing. We're, I think that. I think the minute I think that's one of the things that we need to be feel we need to feel important that we have significance and I think that we always need to feel like we're growing or else if we feel like we're not learning and growing I think then we get stagnant and and go backwards and if you don't use it you lose it right, right. And one last thing what for the new year is coming up and it's going to end soon 2024 is coming what do you want to wish what wish do you want to share with the world? I want to share, well, first of all, peace, love, and happiness. And I want people to say yes to opportunities because, you know, life is happening now. And, you know, we need to be in the moment and cherish every moment and be creative. Say yes, even if, you, if it's uncomfortable and, and you're afraid. I think by stepping into it, I wouldn't have met you if I didn't say yes to Rose to sing at her event. And I just said yes, and it, my whole world opened up. And all the people that I've been meeting and opportunities, it's been, it's just been really exciting. And all the people that have come to the show, and it's been a journey, and every situation is different. Every show is different because the audience is different. And they're your, they're my scene partner. So I, I would say, mm, that's great. you know, I would say, you know, say yes, because life is happening now. What do we have to lose? Well, I mean, it's, it's so interesting because at the same place I was in, I was invited secondhand to that party. I'm a secondhand rose. rose. And it was just great. And just watching the progress of getting to know you and seeing the, the so much work that you do when you put out your, you're also a uh, speaker. Yes, I'm a public speaker. I speak on resilience and creativity, and, and I help people with their performances. So my question to you, because you, you keep saying women's empowerment. Yes. And well, what about men's empowerment? Well, men love and women. Men's, no, I, I, every, everybody's <laughs> empowerment. It's just that a lot of my, my show, Rita Hayworth, The Heat Is On, is a show about we're, we're dealing with some really dark issues that we need to to talk about that people didn't talk about in the golden age of Hollywood. I mean, it's a fabulous, uplifting show, but it's about taking responsibility for the choices one makes in, in their life, in Rita's life, in all of our lives, because our destiny is shaped by the choices we make or we don't make. And she, she, you know, she had so many highs. She was the hottest star in, in the world in 1946 with Gilda and starred with some of the most incredible men, Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, 
uh, Victor Mature. She was married to Orson Welles. She was the first princess. She married Prince Ali Khan before uh, Grace Kelly became the princess. And she was so beautiful and she gave so much to the world and she was a wonderful mother. Love uh, eluded her, you know, unfortunately, pr personal love. And she had, there was incest with the father, the first husband, and then our, she had early onset Alzheimer's. So it was a tragedy because nobody had everybody thought she was drinking and I mean yes she was drinking but it, it was unusual and she was the first celebrity who who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and before mm -hmm. before Ronald Reagan and it hurt because she fought for her daughter who was a woman princess Yasmin Khan and and fought for equal inheritance she, it was Yasmin who took care of her for the rest of her life. It right. was Yasmin that, that created awareness for Alzheimer's and created the Alzheimer's Foundation, which has helped thousands of people, and they're still looking for a cure, and they're making people's lives better each and every day because Rita Hayworth fought for her daughter. And people are, are leaning in, and we're getting younger audiences because women are like, oh, my God, that's what women had to go through. And, or I've experienced this, or I've experienced that. And even though it's a story about a movie star, it's about every woman's journey of wanting to be loved and to be relevant. My show, Burlesque to Broadway, again, it's all the women like Mae West, Sally Rand, Fanny Bryce, these women who, when women weren't working, they created themselves, they created their personas, they created their opportunities during the Great Depression you know, during Prohibition, and they shape-shifted culture. We wouldn't have Lady Gaga or Beyonce to, today if it wasn't for a Mae West or a Sally Rand. And so this, that show, is it, that's more like rock and pop uh, with Broadway um, as opposed to the music of the golden age of Hollywood. And it's me and four girls, and we do all the crossover jokes because it used to be men that were baggy pants uh, comedians. And we do all the sexy stuff, but we do it as sexy women, and it's hilarious. <laughs> you know, so, and it's also my story of my relationship with my dad's mom, my granny Lemley, and, and finding tell us, tell my. Tell us about that. Well, she lived behind us, and I'd run. My parents had. In a, Indiana. In Indiana. You're just a little girl from Indiana. Yes, I am. <laughs> and I would run across the street every day after school, and she and I would like. She had eight tracks, and we'd. I listened to all the big band and Sinatra, and we'd listen to, you know, all these great, all this great music, and we'd watch old movies and Carol Burnett and Sonny and Cher, and we'd share the, the biographies of these movie stars, and we'd read them, and we would gossip about them like we knew them. <laughs> but I wanted to be like these women. I wanted to to be um, empowering and empowered and and create my own life and so I had that opportunity with Burlesque to Broadway which tours in casinos and performing arts centers sequence feathers and fans and it's for it's it's a celebration of women and the men who love them I've seen you do a few shows for uh, helping charities and nonprofits yes I oh my god this month has been busy I, I, I sang for Lily which is life's force in later years, which helps seniors stay in their homes in on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And it's so important. It also gives them community. Younger people, there's reach out, because a lot of people don't have family anymore or friends. And this community, lily.org, brings community to these people and helps them with groceries or takes them on a walk or takes them somewhere or teaches them how to use a computer or a cell phone. It, we we forget because a lot of people have grandkids and they'll learn that way, but some people don't have anybody, you know. And I think you're going to be doing something to go to the other spectrum to younger people. Yes, with Alex, Alex yes, Resnick. underground playground. I sang at, at his opening, and I'm going to be at his next opening, and it, it's a wonderful place. It's I didn't know there were no indoor playgrounds in Manhattan because when I was growing up in Columbus, Indiana, Erwin Miller, who was the head of Cummins Engine Company, was such a forethinker. Like every like every building was built by a major architect and we had the most incredible indoor playground that we I grew up in and it was like a fantasy. And what Alex is doing that is so exciting is it's especially for autistic kids or people on on the spectrum but it's for the whole family so there are things for the parents to do there's going to be a restaurant there are are these places that are just 
um, scenes of great creativity and imagination for these kids. And they do it in a safe environment. And also they're teaching people, they're teaching karate and arts. And to have a center like that, and he's gonna have them all over, all over the boroughs. I'm so excited to know Alex and be a part of it. And now you've become a, a big part now of Black Tie Magazine. Uh, Black, Black Tie Magazine with, is the coolest of the cool. They rock, and I am so grateful that... And it's all about philanthropy. Yes. And all the things you're doing, and I know you want to do more shows now to help the Alzheimer's people. Mm -hmm. You should be doing those kind of... Um, We've raised a lot of money. We're, um, like, in the Midwest, the Alzheimer's Foundation has hired our show for their great. benefit, for their gala, and they've raised... We've, We've raised a couple hundred thousand dollars for them, which was really was great because Rita's story is the is the crux. It's the it's the the crux of their organization, and so I love that. And so, to all the readers, you're available to for all the all the charities and nonprofits yes. to appear at their yes uh, or singing. Benefits. What I mean, my my to trio played at, at the Lily Gala and. We played at the playground, but I do a lot of um, events and, and so on. That's and wonderful. it's so great to to be in a room with people that want to help, like you. Like you. And Black Tie Magazine. I mean, what an organization! I mean, they're everywhere, and um, they're making a difference, what, event by event and person by person. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for being here <laughs> for Black Tie Magazine. Where can they see Black Tie Magazine? BlackTieMagazine.com. See okay. all these great, great um, nonprofits and charities from all over the world where you can see organizations that need help. The more we can do to give to other people is the better we'll be. Thank you so much for this time. You're welcome. Well, thank you for... for and where do we see you now? At QuinnLemley.com. And I'm going to be in London in February, the 16th and 17th, at the Pheasantry. Wow. And I'm going to be at the Hilton Hotel for APAP, the, doing Rita Hayworth in what New is York. A, what is a, APAP? It's the Association for Performing Arts. And it's where all the buyers come to find their shows. It's at the Hilton. And I'm going to be performing in New York. Um, I'll either be doing it with the quartet, or I'll be doing it with the big band, hopefully, um, that weekend as well. And Rita what, is, Hayworth, your, what is your Instagram? My Instagram is Quinn-Lemley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming and watching. <laughs> Thank you, Errol.